Hello everyone and welcome to another Creative Design Team YouTube collaboration for March 2024 where we are concentrating on cardstock only projects. This month Close to My Heart have a cardstock carnival special so we thought it would be appropriate to show you all how versatile Close to My Heart cardstock is. So all the cardstock range is discounted. I'll have a link below to my website for everything that I've used today and also to the cardstock carnival so you can check out the special. Andrea and Erin have already gone ahead of me so if you haven't caught up on their videos you can check those out and then of course Julie, Jama, Chelsea and Katie will also be posting videos as the days go on. So I will have a link to the playlist below so you can check out what they're doing which will take you directly to all of our videos once they've aired. You can see I've got some products in front of me here and those of you that have been following me for quite some time know how much I love white backgrounds. So I thought I would create a textured white background for you on camera today. I've got some samples here that I have run through some new embossing folders. These are new to Close to My Heart. They are four by four inches and this stripe one here is a standalone one but the little dots and the bitty flowers they have stencils that go with them as well so you can use the stencils on their own or you can use the embossing folders on their own or you can combine the two. So I'm going to create a totally white background but then I'm going to bring in some other colors but I wanted to show you up close what a difference it makes when you run cardstock through an embossing folder. I've got a regular piece of white daisy here and I'm pretty sure you can pick up on camera the embossed detail on this. So this one's the dots and this one is the stripe so you can use either side of the stripe. You can use the inverted side if you wanted a different look. So I quite like the subtlety of the pattern of this when you use the opposite side to the embossed look. So you can use the debossed side if you wanted to. And this is what the floral element looks like with the bitty flowers. They're all very, very sweet. And I think I'm going to bring in these decorative shape thin cuts. These currently are sold out, but they will be coming back again in April. So keep an eye out for these. This set to me is a staple to be used on scrapbooking projects, also on card making and also art journal projects. It's got a lot of shapes here and all of them have some form of stitch detail on them and they layer up except for this little tab one here, but all of them have different layers. So you can layer them up with different colored card stocks and different textures if you wanted to. So I'm just going to put that aside and start constructing my page. Now I used my score pal in my last video showing how to adhere things. I'm going to use it again in this video. I'm starting off with a white base and then I'm going to create a pattern with the embossed pieces that I've got here. So basically I've cut four by four inch pieces of cardstock and I've run them through my embossing machine and I have three of each pattern. You've probably got an idea of what I'm going to create here. So I've got my 12 by 12 piece in here and then I'm going to follow a bit of a pattern going across and my score pal is going to help me lay everything out so that I've got everything all nicely lined up. I'm being fairly generous with my adhesive because this is a textured pattern so I want to make sure that it adheres well to my bases. Then I'm going to do this striped one and that's going to go in next. I'm making a double page spread today on camera with you and hang around to the end I've actually got another design I'm going to share with you as well but what I'm doing is alternating these and it's sort of putting together like a patchwork quilt almost but it's with paper and embossed paper so there's lots of lovely texture and then I'm going to keep going with the pattern going across the whole 12 by 12 piece. Now while I'm adhering this down I wanted to talk to you about the creative design team and the fact that we have a private Facebook group and I'll have links with all the details below and we have opened the doors for registration since the announcement of Close to My Heart closing we have had a lot of inquiries asking when we are going to open up our menu membership group again. Every week we do a tip video and that can range from anything from a card making or a scrapbooking tip, an organization tip, a tools tip. We have a lot of different tips. We've been going for over two years now. So there's a lot of videos there that you can look at even if you sign up now. We don't retire them at all. And we also do a weekly creative class. So that's a more in-depth dive into creating projects from start to finish. 
We will cover card making as well as scrapbooking and we're mainly technique based. So anything that you learn in our membership group can be applied across the board with whatever supplies you're using. So whether it's a scrapbooking or a card making class and we usually try to include both in each class so that there are ideas for both formats. And the same technique taught in each class flows along from card making to scrapbooking. So registration is open now for that and we would love to have you join us. Yeah. Now you can see how quickly that came together and how nicely it's all lined up using my score pal. You can do this easily enough without a score pal, but I just find it takes all the thinking out of it and the lining up for me. Now I'm going with black and white theme with my mats for my photos. So I've got a four by six photo here and I've triple matted this. So the black mat is cut at a quarter of an inch larger and then the white mat is half an inch larger and then this black mat is half an inch larger again so that I get a sixteenth, a quarter and a quarter of an inch border around all of that. It's a little bit different from having every single mat exactly the same size. And then I was thinking of bringing in a text box down here and you can see I've used the embossing folder here with black cardstock and you get a little bit of texture coming through when you run it through your embossing machine when using close to my heart paper because it has a white core but I'll show you how I've increased that texture even more in just a moment on a piece and when I was putting that down I just thought it was just a little bit too much black and black so quite often when I'm doing white with black I'll bring in rainbow colors and this is where this die cut set has come in but if if you've got things like this in your stash at the moment you could use those keep an eye out for these ones as I said they're going to be back in stock in April and I think they're going to be very popular so what I've done is run through some banners so the larger banner I've got the stitched element on the end and I'm starting off at purple for my first lot of rainbow and I'm just going to dry fit everything here and then I'm going to orange. I'm not using red as such. I decided that I would use purple instead, purple and pinks. And you can see here how well the pattern actually picks up and it's keeping the patterns consistent throughout this page. So I'm thinking something like this. I want them grouped together. But before I go any further, I'm gonna show you how to get that texture. So let me just put this aside. And I need a piece of scratch paper for this because I'm going to use a sanding tool. I've got an old CTMH sanding block here, but a piece of sanding paper, fine grade sanding paper wrapped around a block, or you can use a nail file, that will work just as well. And I'm gonna show you on the rosy piece here with the bitty florals. So you can put it down onto a piece of paper. You don't wanna do this on onto your all-purpose mat or onto your Versa mat because you might damage it. So I'm just running the sandpaper across and that's bringing the white core through and highlighting the embossed piece. You still get the raised look to it. It doesn't flatten it at all. You don't need to do too much sanding to highlight those gorgeous little images that are embossed into the paper. So it's quick and it's easy to do and you get a great effect with the dots, the stripes and of course this floral element. And I'm doing the same sort of technique on the second layout I'm going to show you. So I'm just going to put this one back in place here and instead of having a black mat I'm going to use Bluebird. Now this is the light side of Bluebird and this is my journaling spot and I'm going to tuck that under there. Now the thing to note when you're adhering things on top of a textured surface I recommend you be extremely generous with your adhesive. This is probably more than I usually do with just a flat piece of cardstock but because this is raised and has texture to it I want to make sure that this journal box stays in place and then that's going to tuck under here and now I'm going to bring in the right page because this is a double page spread and you can see I've already adhered all of my pieces down and what I might do is rotate it so I don't have exactly the same patterns up against each other let me see maybe I'll do a mirror image so I just need to move this around the other way and dry fit this again just a few little adjustments I think that flows along better rather than having two exactly the same next to each other. So you can see with my rainbow order, I'm basically doing it with the banners. So I've started off on this side and then I'm moving over to the green, the blue and the pink. The colors I've used, I think this is pumpkin, this is Sundance, Limeade, Bluebird and Rosie. And I'm staggering these banners rather than having them spaced out. I quite like the look of that. 
And then I've got some tabs here as well. And these were cut out from this same decorative shapes. So it's this one here. And I've brought in the colors from the left page over to the right page so that it balances out a little bit. I'm gonna do the same thing on the left page here. I'm gonna bring in a limeade and a rosy one. I don't want them to be the exact same height. I find it looks better if you step them just a little bit. So I'm tucking my rosy one down and putting my limeade one on top. So I'm going to adhere all of these pieces down. And once again, I'm being generous with my tape runner here. You could use liquid glue if you wanted to, but I wanna make sure that these stay in position once the page protector goes on and that they don't fall down because I'm doing texture on top of texture. So I'm gonna go ahead and adhere all of these pieces down and then I'm gonna come back with a title for this page and also some other finishing touches. And of course, I've got a second double page layout to show you as well. So I've got all of these pieces that are here down. The little heart I have popped up on 3D foam tape and I'm loving the pop of colour with this black and white. The rainbow colours work really well together I think and this one is going to be about birthday fun. So for the title I'm going to do birthday fun and I'm bringing in the outlined alphabet thin cuts. This also has numbers as well. I have used these before. They're currently sold out but they are coming back in April and these were something that when I did a quick new catalogue flip through I chose as one of my top picks and it's been very very popular but there are more stocks coming in so what I'm going to decide whether or not to do you can see I've done a lot of cutting here and I've got two different colorways so I'm just going to put a couple of letters down because when you cut these you get two in one cut so you get the solid letter and then you also get the outline letter I think what I'm going to do is take this one away so that I can tip this out onto my all-purpose mat here so I can sort through a little bit easier rather than digging around in a little dish. Now I could leave this just as a black title going across and not worry about putting the outline pieces around. So this is just me working out what I'm going to do. I have kept the insides of these letters and I was going to do this in rainbow order and I'm going to see which I like best, whether it's going to be the black with the color around it or if I'm going to go with, I'm going to do two separate piles here and not get them mixed up. I might go with the colored part for the solid letter and the outline piece around the outside. I think that looks more fun than this way. The purple, which is royal, is the darkest in this. And I think it doesn't quite stand out well enough to have the black on the inside with the purple on the outside. I don't even have to fill in the letters. I can use the inside pieces that I've got for this. I should use my pick up tool that will make it a lot easier. I love this pickup tool. So I could have it just like this and have the outline area, but I quite like the thought of having all the different colors with the black outline. So let me have a look at on what this might look like. And I do like how this looks because it brings in the black photo mats because the only black elements I have on these are the black photo mats. So I think that's going to work quite well. So I'm gonna lay all of this out and adhere it down. You don't need to watch me do all of that. And then I will be back with some finishing touches and also my other page layout. Before I adhere this down, I just wanted to go through how I'm laying this out. I'm not going to put the letters all in a straight line because this is a fun page and I think having them at different heights all the way across will bring in that sense of fun. The other thing that I would recommend that you do while you're adhering your letters is to have a block or an ink pad if it's a clean ink pad on hand so that in between each letter that you adhere down, you can put the block on top and that will make it press onto the this textured piece and allow things to adhere a bit more while you're prepping the next piece. That will help everything adhere nicely. So you can see I've already done these ones and they're not moving around at all. So that really helps with adhering things to a textured background. And if you get glue onto your blocks at all, I just use a little bit of hand sanitizer on here and a clean cloth and that cleans everything off beautifully. So here's the left page with the title all finished. I didn't quite space it out right and I ended up right on the edge, but that's okay. It all works and it'll be fine once it goes into the page protector. You can see that I've added some balloons and I wanted to show you how I've colored those in. 
and there's a lot of shimmer and sparkle on here from the clear shimmer brush so I'll show you how I did that I've already got the one done in rosy and limeade and this one here is royal pumpkin and sundance but I want to add the three colors in here and I've got some little enamel dots that I'm spreading around keeping to the color tones as well I'll just bring in some scratch paper to do this on so I've got my bluebird ink and this is really quick colouring, so there's not much involved with this apart from the fact that you need to tap off first so you don't get harsh lines. And then I've just come in on an angle around the balloon and I'm making sure that I leave an area of this fairly clear of colour. I want the darkest part of the colouring on the left, sorry, on the right side and up this edge here. And then just a small amount of the colour in this top corner. Well, not that there's a top corner, but in this top left area of the balloon. So you can see that I have left that piece there with no inking on it whatsoever. And that's as quick and easy as it is. You don't have to be perfect with this at all. And it adds a beautiful texture to the balloons. So I'm going to die cut this out. And I forgot to mention where I got the balloon from. It's from a retired set floating by and I love the little animals and everything but for this one I just wanted the balloons and it's a perfect balloon shape. And for my balloons I have used the clear shimmer brush all the way through this. So I'm just giving that a good shake. And then I'm going to squeeze a little bit onto my all-purpose mat and then tap it off. And you can see I actually squeezed the barrel a little bit when I was opening it. So I've got rather a large amount there for my balloon, but that's okay. I'm going to stagger them going up here and I might be able to hide that piece or I might just go with it. The other thing that I'm going to do is put some splatter on this area here as well. So I'm just going to mask this off and pick this up and just add some more sparkle. I'm going to hold the page up so you can see what a great effect this gives to the whole entire layout. Even though it's white on white up there and it's clear on the white cardstock, you still get some sparkle happening. I'm just going to get a little bit more out here. I'm just going to put that aside to dry. And I'm also going to put some on this area here because I didn't do that originally. I just did across where the title is and also where the balloons are. So I'm hoping the camera picks up all of that shimmer and shine on this layout. It's so fun to put the clear shimmer brush over the ink and the close to my heart inks do react a little bit with water, not as much as distress oxides. And if it's fresh inking, then you'll get a better reaction with it. Now this one isn't quite adhered enough. So this corner, I just need to make sure I've got a little bit more adhesive on there. And then I'm going to work out where my balloon's going to go. So I'm going to put the blue one at the top and then stagger this down. I don't want green on green at all. So what I think I might do is put them like this and have this one coming over top. No one's going to see that I've got that big blob on there. So this one I'm going to here straight to page. And I'm going to put some liquid glue on the balloon string just to make sure that that adheres to the page as well. The green one I'm going to put up on the thin 3D foam tape and then the pink one I will put up on 3D, the thicker 3D foam tape. And then I'm going to bring in the other layout once I've added my little dots here. So stay tuned. There's the finished two page spread. You can see that I've layered up the balloons. The blue one is flat to the page with no adhesive on this side. The green is on the thin 3D foam tape and the pink is on the thicker 3D foam tape so that it pops up a little bit more. So there's absolutely no pattern paper on this piece, but I think it works really well with the embossed elements from the new 4x4 inch embossing folders. Now, some of those aren't in stock at the moment, but they are coming very soon, either later this month or April. This has been quite popular because it is a new product that Close to My Heart brought out with this size. Now I did want to show you something about making a 12 inch strip. I tried to do it with these embossing folders because they do have an opening at the top. But no matter what I seem to do, so I put my cardstock in here, this is a 3 inch by 12 inch piece, did my embossing and then fed it up and I was very, very careful 
to line up where the next row of dots were going to be but for some reason it flattened out the ones I had previously on each pass through. So if anybody has a better idea or they've had more success with feeding this through to get a continuous pattern, I don't actually mind that there's a little bit of a flattened piece here. I could actually put some silver glitter paper across there or something like that so nobody would actually see that the pattern doesn't go all the way through. But it was just curious to me because I have done this with the regular size embossing folders, but for some reason this one just flattened it out just a little bit too much to give a continuous look. So I've used the embossing folders on the next double page spread I'm going to show you. I'm not going to take you through how I made it, but I do want to give you a little demonstration on one of the elements that I've put together for it. Instead of making everything square on this next layout, I have cut three inch circles and then run those through the embossing folder. I've just used the dots on the page I'm going to show you. And I did ink up the edges of this. So I made some in harbour and some in mist. So this is the mist one. And then I've just gone around the edges of these in a circular sort of fashion, just to create a little bit more depth. And I'll show you the layout in just a moment. But I wanted to make some semicircles from them. And this sort of gives more of a 3D look. I did another video last week where I did a globe and I inked up the piece that was underneath the grid of the globe and it just gave a circular look to it. And I love how that turned out. Now, that's what I'm going to do for this. But I am going to do some sanding. But this time, instead of sanding the whole entire piece, I'm just going to sand. I'll actually leave this here to catch the paper dust. I'm not going to sand the whole lot of it. I'm just going to do random sections just to give it a bit more texture. And then what I did was simply cut these in half. Now it's very easy with my Fiskars trimmer. This is a three inch circle so I just need to line it up at the one and a half inch edge. And when you put your circle in, there's the one and a half, it nestles perfectly in between where the blade runs through because there is a gap here at the guide at the top and also at the bottom. Whoops, and if I don't move it, I'll get it to work properly. So there's my one and a half inches. I can just close that over and simply slice that through to get a perfect one and a half inch by three inch semicircle. So let me bring in the pages. And this is a totally different color palette from what I just created on screen with you with the birthday page. It's very tonal with mist and harbour and you can see what I mentioned before about not sanding off all of the elements with those raised embossed dots here. Just a few of them just to add a little bit of texture and difference to each of the semicircles. So you only really need four three inch circles to create this border here because when you cut them in half, you fit four semicircles across each edge. And I've used the plastic packaging technique on my pieces. I'm not sure if you've seen that before, so I'll give a little demo now. Just get some scrap white paper. So basically you just get your ink, you smoosh it down onto your all-purpose mat or if you have a glass mat that will work as well. You get your water bottle and you just do a little bit of spray onto here and then put your hand inside some packaging and just pick up a little bit. You don't need a lot. This is white daisy cardstock. So it's not watercolour paper and then you do a little bit of smooshing so I'm moving the ink around so I get some of the larger sections here and then I let that dry just a little bit and I go in with a very light hand and just touch and that gets me some of those little dots here. You can see I'm getting little features of dots rather than the whole swoosh sort of thing happening and then I can bring in more down here further so that it looks a little bit like the sea. So very quick and easy to do, you just need to set it aside to dry for a little bit or if you're a bit impatient you can use a heat tool on it. But I do love the look of these pages and the tones. They're totally different from the black and white with rainbow colours and it is all cardstock. There's no pattern paper here at all. And the photos that I'm going to put on here are those overcast sort of days at the beach or it could be a visit to the aquarium if you wanted to do something like this because I've made my own pattern paper here with some stamping. 
And I've got out one of my favourite stamp sets, my favourite summer stamp sets, Cape Cod Scrapbooking. And this does come with thin cuts. You can see there, there are thin cuts here that you can use. But I've used the stamps to stamp the images. This is the light side of mist and I've used mist to do the stamping. And you can see the texture in the stamp still comes out really well. I didn't want to do the dark side of mist because I knew I wanted to stamp mist on here. And this is first generation, it's not second generation. And then when I've come to the middle section, I've sort of extended this coral piece to go across. I'm just gonna hold this piece up to the camera as well. I've stamped a little mini title here, Let's Explore Together. And that is from the Let's Go Anywhere card making workshop. And I love the arrow details on this. If you've watched the video that I put up this week on Tuesday, My Time Tuesday, you know that I love all of these little dotted elements that are in this Let's Go Anywhere collection. And I've stamped that in Harbour on top of the mist. Now I do do little tests. So I did a little test here with the crab thinking I would put it down in this section here and to see whether or not the harbour would actually be strong enough to go on top of this. But the arrows all pointed off to the right. So it didn't quite work down in this corner because it would be pointing off to the edge of the page. So I have put that up here. And I've also stamped a border going across the top here. There's actually some harbour cardstock, just a quarter inch strip going across the top of my page. And that's from the Cape Cod Scrapbooking. I know a lot of you had this set because it was very, very popular when it came out. Sadly, it's no longer available. I know a lot of you have this and I always love going back through my stamps to find the appropriate one for the photos that I'm going to put on the page. So this is the rope stamp going across the top and it finished off this top area here. But the embossing folders work so well with shapes as well as with squares. And you can definitely use them if you've got a large alpha set as well, alphabet thin cut. And because these are a four by four inch piece, you can see you can get quite a few letters in there at one time to add some texture to letters as well. So it's quite polar opposites when you look at these layouts together. One is bright and fun with a clean white background and the other is more muted tones, more neutral tones and tone on tone stamping. But I love them both. I think they've both come out really well with these embossing folders and just cardstock and no pattern paper at all. Remember to check the description below for the links for the playlist for the Creative Design Team girls. I can't wait to see what the rest of the team have in store for us. I always love when we do these cardstock only collaborations. It really is a lot of fun just to challenge ourselves to use cardstock only rather than bringing in pattern papers. Also check below for the links to everything that I've used and a link to the CDT Creatives Membership Group, which as I mentioned earlier, is now open for registration. You don't wanna miss out on that. I'm not sure when we're going to be opening again. And that registration link will be open until the 25th of March. I appreciate all the lovely comments when you take the time to make a comment on the video and I appreciate all the thumbs up and the likes that I receive. Thank you so much for tuning in as always. Happy crafting and bye for now.